Hello guys, Kim Jong Lee here, and I'm back with another online commentary battle for Rome Total War. This time it's a 2 vs 2 31k rules battle sent in by our subscriber, Ezrax, as you would all probably know by now. And uh, this was a tournament battle, I'm not sure about the name of the tournament, but it was a uh, 2v2 31k tournament. So, I'll have a look at his teammate here, Coda, um, also in the Immortals of War clan, and their opponents are Luke and it into of the Harvesters of Sorrow clan. So we'll get the battle started. Um, they've all just got 14 6 builds, so 14 Urbans and 6 Praetorians. Uh, so not much to go through in that respect. Um, we're just going to see the some of the openings. Uh, Coda's formation is much tighter than Nidintu's, but Nidintu's spread is really just through in his pillar screens. Um, but, uh, it looks like Koda's gonna spread to match Nidintu, which is good, but he's gonna get a bit of Peeler in the process there. And, Ezrax is gonna go super wide with the Peeler screens, and, uh, push up to skirmish with Luke. So, Luke and Adintu, fairly well-known CWB players, um, known as pretty good players in general. Uh, Coda and Ezrax, um, playing a lot more 31k. Um, so we'll see how this pans out. We see Adintu push up a bit here. He's gonna cop a, quite a bit of peeler on these front units there. They are the peeler screens, but it's still, um, a bit awkward I suppose. And he's going to start trying to get Pila into these tight formation units. Coda's going to bring the units that th have thrown their Pila back, which is a nice strategy. And he's going to bring fresh units to the front and to get their Pila out as well. Um, it's quite valuable to get as much Pila out as you can before engaging all your infantry. Because later on in the game, um, you, pro you won't have as much Pila left to throw because um, all your men will be dead. Um, so it's much better to get them off um, in the early stage, stages of the game, like Coda is trying to do, and what Nedinto was also doing. Uh, so Luke gonna push up a bit here with this uh, group of five Urbans, trying to exploit the gap a little bit maybe. He could probably be a bit more aggressive <coughs> in this gap, but it is a risk, because if you go into the gap, um, it does open up uh, a striking opportunity for your opponents um, but there are ways to capitalize on it so we'll see whether he decides to go for that or not um, over here his formation is quite thin um, but uh, he's diverted quite a lot of resources towards Nidintu's side and he's plugged this gap between himself and Nidintu but uh, his formation is still very very wide as you guys can see uh, over here, we've had a bit of a charge come in from Coda, routing one unit there, which is quite nice, but he's not doing so well in the infantry fight on this side. Um, his loose formation infantry is in guard mode, so they're going to get minced up a little bit by the tight formation urbans. <coughs> but a good route going on this center part here. And Ezrax, we can see here, also devoting a couple of urbans to the center. Um, and he's going to bring his cav over as well to mirror Luke's and Nidintu's. Um, so Ezrax going to keep playing the Pila game a bit over here. Uh, Luke's lines and Ezrax's lines are very thin, as you can see now on this side, um, because they're both just pushing their resources into this side because all the action is going on here. Um, Koda is going to come in with a charge into these tight units, which is uh, okay, but um, Nidintu is going to get the counter charge, which is quite dangerous, and uh, Coda has to pull out, uh, because you really don't want to take that. Uh, Ezrax is going to come in, though, with a t smaller counter charge, um, and <coughs> Nidintu is going to come around with one of his spare cab units here, and they sent five into the, to the counter and brought one around, so that's a nice move there. Uh, Ezrax pulling some cav to the far right, but not being very productive with them. Um, and they're going to lose that right flank, which could be game-breaking. Uh, but 
the Immortals team has to now pull back, uh, give up the flank a little bit, and try and regroup. Uh, that was pretty bad for them. Uh, Nadintu really just outplaying them um, on that right side. Um, so they're going to have to try and get their cab out of there. They don't. They really don't want their cab to get stuck because they uh, the Harvester's team has 12 on that side, and um, they're going to get the charge bonus if if they stay around there. And uh, yeah. Uh, the, the Immortals team really just has to reorganize right now at this point. The loot could have been a bit more aggressive here. I mean, three units against six is quite good odds for him, I'd say. Uh, but he's this is going to allow Ezrax to pull a couple of units to this side. And Luke looks like he's going for it now. He's seen that it's three to three to six, likes his odds, and is going to try and get this done and dusted as quickly as you can, but it might take a while um, if Ezrax decides to test pseudo and stall, so the immortal team is going to have to try and make the most <coughs> of this uh, this thingy over here, probably. Um, Ezrax, I don't know if he's trying to save it, it's not really worth saving. Okay, so they're going for this side, which is a good target. Um, after the <coughs> main engagement over there, a lot of the Harvester's cav was on this side, so uh, the Immortals team switched their attention to this left side of the main fight. Um, I managed to get a few routes, <coughs> although this unit's probably coming back with 41 guys. Um, Ezrax, uh, three units here holding up six. Quite impressive. And the Immortals really have to make something of it, or it's they're not going to win this. So, <coughs> Ezrax's going to throw his cav in. Coda already has his cav engaged on this right side. He's trying to save it. Um, Ezra is going to go in here, and that's a pretty good charge. Uh, Luke coming in a bit too late on this for the support for Nadintu. He had his cav around here, probably hoping to counter one of the Immortals' charges, but he um, they switched their attention to this side, and he didn't get there in time. So <clears throat> very well played by the Immortals. Um, that's very good for them, but the uh, Harvester's team still has a decent chance. <clears throat> um, they did get quite a decent thing going on this side, so I'd say it's still fairly even, but definitely the momentum is in the uh, Immortals team's favor. Um, so Luke's going to come in here with a s charge into the center. Ezrax is going to bring his general in to boost morale and try and stop him from routing, and he's going to take his cav in there for a counter charge, and this looks like it's going to deal a pretty serious blow. Um, no, no, the... Okay, so Coda's going to wrap around the flank and that will end it for the right side, but we have these Senate units coming in the back here. Um, <clears throat> I would have liked them to come in a lot earlier and Luke's still floating three units, so uh, Luke, uh, his micro uh, could be a bit better. Um, those units really could have helped. Uh, earlier on, but anyway, he's going to th uh, Luke's going to throw in some of his units and going to be able to catch a lot of these urbans in a bit of a sandwich. Um, so the harvesters have taken this left side quite decisively, but the um, immortals of war team is the one are the ones with the cav advantage, and with these with this large amount of cav, it's quite good um, in this situation. So. <clears throat> the Immortals now have to play carefully with the infantry, but they can play quite aggressively thanks to their cav advantage, and it looks like they're going to send in some now. Ezra's going to throw in the cav from this side, and Kodo going to come in with a charge over here as well, and it looks like uh, the the Harvester's team has just admitted defeat. So... <clears throat> um, yeah, very well played to both teams. It was actually quite quick. Uh, quite a fast fight. Um, the openings took the opening took a while to get going, but uh, really exciting actually. Really, exci really exciting game. Really could have gone either way, um, for the most part. Uh, really, this right shot, right side, sorry, was very crucial. Um, the Harvesters team got a really pretty good thing going. Pushed the Immortals team back, but the Immortals team regrouped uh, quite well. Um, I think they could have done it a bit better, but. They regrouped quite quickly, realized that 
you know, um, trying to save that side was meaningless. They fell back, regrouped, and then managed to launch a pretty nice counter attack. Caught the Harvester's team out a little bit there. Um, Nadintu's Cav maybe overextending a little bit, and Luke uh, not uh, not getting to the zone in time, uh, which was unfortunate for them. But well played to both teams. <coughs> um, I'm sure the Harvesters of Sorrow team will have their own like um, probably weren't too happy with that though uh, because they they did get the first kind of advantage the upper hand uh, but the Immortals team played quite well so you can't really fault them for that and yeah well played guys hope you enjoyed it and I will see you guys next time